So, Bradley Wistens recently challenged his subscribers to race down one of Kerbin's rivers. Here's the challenge. Starting from the mouth of this river, travel all the way to the source of the river, which is over here. All without exceeding 400 meters or leaving the canyon. In total, this river is an insane 800 kilometers long. That's larger than the radius of Kerbin itself. Now, we could do this with jet engines or propellers. You know, something reasonable. But reasonable is not what we do on this channel. This channel got its wings on the backs of salt rocket boosters. So, why don't we try running this course with SRVs? Now, this is probably possible with staging, but seeing as Bradley is a master of single-stage crafts, I think it's only fitting that we'd give him a single-stage design. So I set out and I built this thing here. It's gonna be a long trip, so let's light up the engines and I'll explain as we go along. The first thing you may have noticed is this runway here is definitely not in the stock game. I used Kerbal Constructs to put this here. This runway is just long enough to get the craft up to speed and ends just before the course starts. Now I did this because you're technically allowed to throw the craft into the course, you know, as long as you don't exceed the maximum speed it could get under its own power, but that would involve cheats or some staging to get it up to speed first. I did want to make this more challenging for myself by making it a purely single stage design, and that means getting it up to speed under its own power. As for the craft itself, inside that bearing we have 16 Clydesdales, which are staged in series. Now the reason I'm doing this is to actually have some control over the throttle of the engine. With these 16 engines, I can gradually ramp down the thrust of the craft with each stage as the fuel drains, and thus fly more efficiently. By contrast, if I had done this with one SRB, the thrust to weight ratio would have increased over the course of the burn, which is the opposite of what we want to fly efficiently. Alright, talking about the course itself, we've got some difficult turns in the course coming up. Let me briefly explain my approach to them. I want to go into these turns wide and with as much altitude as possible. We need to take the turns wide here in order to minimize the drag losses. This is because turning increases the amount of lift the wings need to provide, which in turn produces more drag. The wider the turn, the less drag we can incur. Still, this isn't enough on its own. The engine thrust is optimized for level flight, and thus doesn't have enough thrust to make up for the speed losses in this turn. This is why I need the altitude, so I can convert it into speed during these sharp turns to help me get through them. This is especially true at the start where we have these two difficult turns right away and we're still very heavy from nearly being full of fuel. After these two turns, it's mostly smooth sailing now. There's only one more difficult turn later on in the course. I'll let you know when it comes up. While I have used a lot of clipping, it's not as egregious as it may look. I'm not actually gaining any delta V from this. It still has the same delta V as if I had just used one solid rocket motor. In a way, this is just a custom SRB thrust curve. If I could adjust the SRB thrust curve in stock, then this could technically be done with just one SRB. The actual thrust of each SRB was determined through some experiments in order to maximize the range of the craft. You may notice that we're flying maybe a bit faster than would be optimal for maximum lift to drag. This is because velocity is also an important consideration for maximum range. As it turns out, there are conditions where flying faster at a lower lift to drag ratio can be better for the maximum range of the aircraft, and so that is what I've optimized the thrust for. Check the description for the experimental details and a more detailed explanation for why this is true. One last important consideration for range is the altitude we fly at. Since flying higher results in a higher ISP and lower drag, we want to fly as close to the 400 meter course ceiling as we can without exceeding it. While the ISP difference between sea level and 400 meters isn't that large, the margins on this run are actually so tight that it does make a difference. Here's the next tricky turn of the run. After this fork in the river, there's a very tight right turn followed by another sharp left turn. These are much tighter than the ones at the start, but since we are much lighter now, we could do them fairly easily. Well, I think you get the gist of it. 
I think I'll shut up for now and let you enjoy the run. See you at the finish line. Alright, we are now out of fuel, but the end is just around this corner. When I said there was a tight margin, I wasn't kidding. We literally have to glide the rest of the trip and hope our 400 meters of altitude gave us enough margin to make it. Fortunately, with just barely enough altitude and speed left, we've crossed the biome from shores to grassland and thus have officially finished the course. All that's left is to land it and... oh. Oh great, thanks landing gear. Okay, but fortunately there's also this little pond right after the end, so we can plop ourselves down in it. And with that, we are done! We have successfully run the 800 km long river course with only the power provided by the stock solid rocket boosters. Thank you for watching! I'll see you in the next one!